there, welcome to In My Opinion for Wife Quest. You play as Mia, who's married to a hardworking and loving husband, Fernando, who constantly gets hit on by other women, monster women to be exact, which Mia is not a fan of. One day, the witch Morgana kidnaps Fernando, making a deal with the other monster women to help her so they can all share him. Mia is furious and now must go save her husband and teach all these bitches a lesson. If this sounds goofy to you, well, that's because it is. I guess the best way to describe this is a harem anime, only thing is the main guy is married and the others don't take the hint. I found myself chuckling at the interactions between Mia, who is rightfully pissed, and the other characters you run into, like a drunk Oni and a frost queen with interesting taste. If you don't mind some vulgar language and things like boob jokes, then you'll find this to be a funny little story. As you can see, this is a 2D action platformer, so be prepared to jump and slash your way through multiple monster women. The jumping feels responsive, and whenever I got hit or fell to my doom, I didn't blame the game. The levels themselves offer a pretty good rise in difficulty as you go on. As it does feel rather easy when you start, but additions like more death holes, running away from boulders, or being swept away by snow keeps you on your toes, but it never comes off as mind-boggling hard. The game also has a pretty generous checkpoint system, so you never feel like you're losing a lot of progress if you kick the bucket. There is a gameplay mechanic in which you can punish these women by performing an animation like stomping on them or choking them out and such. I ain't gonna lie, this was a pretty funny sight to behold, though it does get repetitive quickly. Thankfully, there's no real need to do this every single time unless you want to, as all you get is a new animation you can look at at the main menu when you do it to a brand new enemy. You may have noticed that some areas feel out of reach, triggering your gamer instincts to try to get to that spot. Well, you'll have to wait till you take out the bosses as when you defeat them, you gain new powers. Like some wings that let you glide and a dash that will help you move fast as well as use blocks in certain levels to reach areas. Speaking of the bosses, this is where the game really surprised me as the boss battles have some teeth to them. In fact, most of my deaths were because of these fights. Looking at this game, you would think they would be a joke, but no, they can take a good amount of punishment and even have two phases that up the challenge. For example, the fairy boss starts off rather simple with her just flying back and forth and throwing out some attacks that you can dodge or block with your shield. Then on the next phase, she gets rid of the floor and now you must bounce on a mushroom while dodging her and two other plant attacks. I honestly had a blast fighting all these bosses, always looking forward to the next one, and I never felt like I was getting cheated and just had to learn the patterns and survive. The boss fights also have special punishment animations, and I have to say some feel kind of brutal, such as the fairy boss where you rip off her wings, and that's how you get the power. Another thing you have to keep in mind is your powers do waste MP, and this is even counting your shield, which is an extremely useful tool for saving your ass either against the boss fights, or just an attack from a regular enemy you don't have time to dodge. Luckily, when you kill an enemy, there's a chance they will drop a crystal to replenish your MP. They can also drop HP to refill your hearts, in which you have 5 at the start, and another drop is cold hard cash. You can find these three things in chests as well that is spread across the levels. You'll be using the cash in the shop run by your Mia the Dwarf, who is also a funny little character. Here you can buy upgrades that will increase your HP, MP, attack speed, and so on. Each time you complete a level, she will add upgrades so you can keep improving yourself. You can also buy a bag to carry some HP and MP potions around. I do like the fact that when you buy a new sword, Mia's outfit changes color, as it's a nice little touch. Besides just beating the game, there is other stuff you can do and collect. There are animations of punishment attacks you can unlock, pictures and music tracks you can find in the levels, and there's also character pictures in the shop. Each level also contains three of the same challenges, which is find all the chests, kill all the enemies, and the speed run. Thankfully, you don't have to do all the challenges at once, and can tackle them however you like. The game even keeps track of how many monsters you took out and chests you've opened. They even put a check mark on the enemies when you replay the level, not making you wonder, hmm, is this the enemy I was missing the whole time? And doing the challenges unlock more pictures. I think you can figure out why there are a lot of picture collectibles in this game. Beating the game also unlocks 1 degree wife mode and magic mode. The first mode is more like an old school bit sized version of the game with like 4 little areas and it's a nice little addition. Magic mode is basically super wife mode as you can start a new game with all your powers and you have infinite MP. And you can become even stronger as new shop upgrades are added. This mode comes in handy if you want to steamroll everything again for fun and you can also use it to make the challenges easier. The game doesn't look half bad, it's bright and colorful even when in caves and while the levels won't wow you in originality as you got your forest level, lava level and such, they are still varied enough that you don't feel like it's repeating itself. The character models are also easy on the eyes with some really nice designs, especially the bosses, and I was surprised of how expressive the animations were. It's all very anime, and of course it added a lot of bounce to them as well. Though I do have to say that the drawings like you see in the intro ain't the best looking. While there is no voice acting, the characters do make noises, mainly when you do the punishment stuff. So if you don't want anyone around you hearing these women make certain sounds, I would suggest headphones or low volume. I didn't run into any tech issues, so it was a pretty smooth experience.
The game's enjoyable levels and boss battles led to a really fun time, and I found a good amount of the humor pretty funny. It took me around 3 hours to beat, and when it comes to replay value, you have the magic mode, 1 degree wife mode, challenges, and all the collectibles. So there's a pretty decent amount of extra stuff to do if you want to add more to your playtime. If you're in the mood for a fun little action platformer and don't mind the type of humor the game has, then I say go out there and help Mia save her husband from these crazy chicks. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game, and for gamer's sake, keep gaming.